Hello friends, in this video we will quickly review the contrast agents. So contrast agents, they can be either radio contrast agents, ultrasound contrast agents or MR contrast agents. The radio contrast agents are agents which are used in x-rays as well as CT scan. And these radio contrast agents, they can be barium, iodinated compounds and you know these can be either positive contrast agents or negative contrast agents. The ultrasound contrast agents, these are micro bubbles of air, these are micro bubbles of air. Whereas MR contrast agents, the most commonly used MR contrast agent is gadolinium. So the radio contrast agents, they can be barium or iodinated compounds. And these barium and iodinated compounds, these are bright on the radiographs and they appear white. So, these are positive contrast agents. They can also be negative contrast agents like water, like air, carbon dioxide, mannitol. All of these can act as negative contrast agents. They appear darker than the surrounding tissue. So, these are your different types of contrast agents. So, the positive contrast agents are the ones which appear brighter than the surrounding tissue. Examples include barium and iodinated compounds. The negative contrast agents they appear darker than the surrounding tissue and these can be air, water, mannitol, carbon dioxide and other gases. Now, talking about barium sulphate. Barium sulphate is a common contrast agent used for GI imaging. Barium is having a high atomic number of about 56. Barium is inert and it does not interfere in digestion. It is not absorbed from the GI tract, it is non-toxic and also coats the mucosa uniformly. That is the reason it is preferred for GI imaging. Remember, barium is water insoluble, should never be given IV. It is always given orally or parrectally for GI evaluation. So, never given IV, always used as suspension. It is water insoluble compound. And barium is absolute contraindication in patients with bubble perforation or hollow viscous perforation. Remember, barium causes severe chemical peritonitis and that is the reason it is avoided in patients with hollow viscous perforation or in cases of bowel perforations. And remember, it can also cause mild mediastinitis. So, avoid this usually in the esophageal perforation also. Only if you have to use it in esophageal perforation, use it in a very dilute form but usually avoid it in bubble perforations as well as esophageal perforations. In case of esophageal perforation, if you have to give, you can use it in a dilute form. So basically, the role of barium in perforation peritonitis or hollow viscous perforation, please remember barium is absolute contraindication. Barium is absolute contraindication. And what is the preferred agent then? Remember, the preferred agent is iohexol. Iohexol, which is a water-soluble iodinated compound, iohexol is preferred. And what about esophageal perforation? In esophageal perforation also, avoid barium initially avoid barium initially and in esophageal perforation also the preferred one is iohexol iohexol is preferred and if it is not seen on iohexol if the leak is not seen on iohexol you can give a dilute form of barium so can use dilute barium if the perforation is not seen on iohexol if leak is not demonstrated on iohexol Okay.